Thank you so much for watching the next segment of Self-Made Successful Woman, and I am your host, Salua. Self-Made Successful Woman is a platform where inspirational women share with us their personal journeys, the challenge they have faced, and most importantly, what success means to them. And you may have noticed my awesome sweater. This is my next guest, Brand Apparel. It's never too late or too early to get your body into the shape you want. Well, getting fit started out as more as a self-fulfilling journey for today's guest. But that journey, she would later learn, blossomed into a desire for her to share her moves and expertise to help others feel just as great, both inside and out. She's been in the fitness industry for the past two decades. It's my pleasure to introduce you to today's guest, Dana Lee Chapman, the founder of RealFit.tv. Hi, Dana. Hi. Well, thank you so much for being part of Self-Made Successful Woman. I am honored to be here. Thank honestly. you. And I love the sweater. Oh. Love it, love it. I'm going to take that one home. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit more about you? Yes. So I am 40 years old. I just turned 40 this year, and I'm actually pretty proud to be 40. And you look good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's really my lifestyle that, you know, I feel young. I feel good about everything I've accomplished uh, at this age. Um, I also got a tattoo this year to nice. celebrate my 40th. Uh -huh. um, a couple years ago, I got my motorcycle license, so I ride motorcycles with my husband. Um, so I am married. We've been married for 10 years, 11 years. Uh, so happily married. I feel like every year we're mm -hmm. together, it just keeps getting better and better. Um, I am a proud aunt, <laughs> my husband and I, we don't want kids. We're very happy with our lifestyle. We travel. Um, I own a business, so it allows me this flexibility and um, to bring, you know, happiness and serve others. Uh, that's part of my own fulfillment, and I'm sure we'll get into that as well. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So can you tell us a little bit more about your business? So RealFit.tv didn't start out as an online business. Um, actually, it started back when I was a teenager. Believe it or not, I felt very, I mean, I felt really insecure about myself, um, as many teenagers do. I felt this pressure to be thin, to be skinny, mm -hmm. and to kind of fit into this mold. And I didn't... You know, I just felt like I didn't have the information handy to understand how to take care of myself or that that, that was even irrational thinking, right? Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. of living up to society standards. But when I found out that you could actually go to school to study exercise physiology, now, of course, I was like, oh, you can study how to be skinny? Oh, my God, sign me up. So it, that's how it originally began. I went to school to study exercise physiology. Mm -hmm. While I was in school, I did end up getting all of these gr you know, group fitness certifications. I got my personal training certification. And I mean, thank God, because that actually paid really well, and I was able to put myself through school. Mm -hmm. So I quickly found out that, well, I don't really need my full degree in exercise physiology. So I got my minor in ex -phys, but I graduated with a BFA in graphic design. I know, art, science, yeah. completely different. But I honestly, art was my original love. I come from a family of artists. So I finished my degree with graphic design and started working in the field of marketing. Mm -hmm. Now, this really opened my eyes to the fact that all these gyms that I taught in, the advertisements they had, billboards, um, flyers, brochures, whatever they were doing to help new people join a gym and get healthy, they were always of these scantily clad models of like almost this feeling of like, oh my God, I would never look like her or yeah. that's too intimidating. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, over the years as I've talked to people, that's been so many people's experience of why they it's kept them from joining a gym or feeling mm -hmm. like they could belong to a gym. So I have to say my, you know, everything in, ha in life happens exactly as it should. And my eyes open in the marketing field helped me see that in the fitness field, so at my, my passion for fitness and my solution for helping other people get fit was very much needed because there was this gap, this, this yeah. hole of these people would join a gym or they fall through the cracks and they wouldn't feel inspired. So I opened up my own gym, and this was in 2008. It was called Evolution Health and Fitness, mm -hmm. and um, it, you know, I was very proud of opening that gym. It was a long time coming. It took me three and a half years to make it happen. It's definitely something that every day I had this driving force of, I can't wait to open my 
gym. I mean, yeah. my friends probably got like sick of me talking about it. My family too, like shut up already about your gym. Um, but when the, the gym opened, the market turned. So this actually led me to, you know, really believe we are pushed to this point to, um, sometimes to this point of failure mm -hmm. until, to, to really make you see what you're made of mm -hmm. and to see your true path in life, yeah. right? So I thought evolution was like the business that I was supposed to be running. And really that was the stepping stone to get me to understand that I was playing too small of a game. Yeah. And that really brought my business online and hence realfit.tv. So now I help women all around the world and oh my god, I think on my YouTube channel, like over 150 countries. So, so if the market didn't crash, would you have opened the online TV? No. And that's no. what your success is today? Yeah. So <laughs> see what it can be a blessing somehow. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. And at the time, I didn't see it. Yeah. At the time, my world was crumbling. It was devastating, you know, to be going through that. My husband as well, my sister as well. My sister works for me and she, she stayed through thick and thin. My husband stayed through thick and thin. But it really was getting that, you know, crumbling down where everything's pulled away from you to really get you to step up and see your potential. And wow. yeah, so so I wouldn't take any of it back. It was meant to be. <laughs> meant to be. What is your definition of success? So I used to think success was really about money. And now I believe success has more to do with taking what you've been through and being able to help somebody else with it. Mm -hmm. uh, I really believe that your mess is your message. Mm -hmm. And as you can hear a little bit, <laughs> I had quite the mess. Um, but I really use that to my uh, advantage where I'm able to then help and inspire other people, other women specifically, yeah. um, because it, anything you're going through is not for nothing. So, mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, yeah. So I would say my definition of success today has to do with um, using your own history and being able to serve others. And that, at the end of the day, leaves you feeling fulfilled and happy. And that's success. That's great. Great definition. <laughs> so every successful person has daily rituals. What are yours? Oh, I so believe in my daily rituals. They are my glue. Um, first thing in the morning, I always have a nice tall glass of water. I'm also a coffee drinker, so I usually say I'm double fisting it because I got the coffee and the water. <laughs> um, I meditate every morning or most mornings. Let me be honest, most mornings. But meditation will completely change how my day unfolds. It mm -hmm. keeps me grounded, keeps me focused, making solid decisions, mm -hmm. um, staying patient. Mm -hmm. um, another ritual I have is planning my day. I am very much, and this might be the artist in me, the pen to paper kind of person. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I do love my devices and they help with scheduling and whatnot, but having actually, like having a journal and planning um, and dreaming and being able to write my goals out and my dreams out and giving them structure that I do every single day. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course I'm going to say moving my body, right? So, I mean, I own a fitness channel, so, um, that could come in the form of yoga that could come in the form of strength training or, you know, one of the other, like I love spinning, I love kickboxing, um, sometimes walking, and also using, um, if I do take a walk, I'm lucky, lucky enough to live close enough to my studio, my production studio where we're sitting right now, um, I will listen to podcasts. I will listen to audiobooks. I, I believe that, you know, just like we want to feed our body healthy foods, mm -hmm. we want to feed our mind the nutrition it needs yeah, to thrive. That's so, true. Every day. Yep. I agree on that. I have to give you a high five. <laughs> <laughs> so my most important question what was your biggest challenge and how did you overcome it? So I shared a little bit about the struggle I went through with my business, but I have to say, looking back over the years, um, really what made all of that come to fruition was something I've been, I went through in my 20s. So I had met the first love of my life when I was about 20, I think I just turned 21, and he was a successful business owner. Success came to him pretty easily. Like he, he worked hard, don't get me wrong. Um, it also got him into a position where he felt that, um, I guess he just had a hard time coping and he ended up with a severe drug problem. And I, here I am, you know, I didn't smoke pot. I didn't do anything. I barely even drank, you know, I just like wasn't interested. It's not my thing. 
And here I fall in love with this man who, a couple years into our relationship, ended up with a full-blown heroin addiction. Oh. And it was gut-wrenching. I was, I moved in, I moved out. I moved in, I moved out. He went to rehab, he got clean, he was clean, I got pulled back in. It was like this magnetism back and forth and I felt like I was the only person in his life that was this almost this dangling carrot of a reason to get clean. So I kept leaving him. But every time I found out that he was using again, I'll be honest, Sometimes I wanted to turn my cheek because it's like it was just so emotionally draining mm -hmm. and I just wasn't always ready to leave even though I knew that was the right thing to do. So I I just felt in my heart the I always made the best decisions I could based on putting my head down on the pillow at night and what what do I need to do to feel good about myself and I had lost friends over this a relationship um, you know, even at some point my parents are like, he's not allowed in our house. And I could understand all of that. And yet I kept going back to him because I really felt this um, drive to do what was right. And, and I felt the right thing to do was to be there for him in many of those cases where nobody else was there for him. And I'm so glad that I did because on a cold, snowy day in December of 20, 2003, um, I got a phone call from his brother that he committed suicide. And I, oh my God, I was broken for like, you know, my, my sister came and lived with me for like two weeks, I have to say. That was something that re-solidified my relationship with my sister. She lost a few people at a young age, and I. this is the first experience I had with, with death. And here it was, this man that I was in, in love with. And I thought maybe six months ago, he, there was a possibility he would have killed himself, but not now. I was like, what? He was back from rehab. He was doing great. He was possibly going to sell his business. And, whoa, that was just devastating. Um, so I have to say, though, I was, I was very much at peace. Um, I wasn't angry at him at all, which um, it can be very difficult through a suicidal situation. Um, so... But I was, and he even wrote a note. He left a suicide oh, note. Wow. He did. And he named me in the note and said I would be the only one who understood. And that was very true. His family, his friends were completely... He wasn't happy. No, no. He was very broken. He, he had a lot of issues and used heroin to self-medicate. And, um, you know, just came from a very broken upbringing. You know, uh, lost his father at a young age. And so I understand you know, I understand why he chose drugs to cope. Um, and I think because I had that level of compassion, that's why he was so drawn to me too. So mm -hmm. when he passed away and I met Steve maybe six months later, I mean, that's the other huge thing. Knowing what you don't want is so important. So you draw into your life what yeah. you do want. Yeah. And when I met my husband, we were on our second date and I was like, I am marrying this man. Yep. Like, oh my <laughs> God, you knew. And I like, I just drew it into my life because I was very, very clear as to what relation, what kind of relationship I wanted. That is very true. And uh, yeah, so, you know, he, he's just the greatest blessing because he gave me that entrepreneurial spirit that I never thought, when we, you know, back when I was with Brent, that I ever had it in my blood to run a business because I saw what he had to do mm -hmm. and the dedication he had to his business. So I was like, never. And He'll be proud of you today. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. So one of the hardest things, but the most rewarding. Wow. So what piece of advice would you give younger women that have been through what you have been through? <sighs> so don't listen. Don't listen to anybody else tell you what to do, what you can do or what you can't do. You know, you follow in your heart. And this is one of the reasons I meditate. If you can get quiet and get, you, you, the answers will come to you in that knowing of the right thing to do for yourself, not what, what's right for your best friend, mm -hmm. <laughs> who are very well-intentioned. Yeah. They're very well-intentioned, your mother, your sister, your family, all very good intentions. Um, but really, I, I think the, the biggest piece of advice is honor yourself and what inside your heart it's telling you what to do and what not to do. That's very, very great. Do you have a quote or a mantra that you live by? I do. Um, 
be the change you want to see in the world. Gandhi. Oh my God, I love that quote. <laughs> I love that quote. It reminds me that if I'm if I'm in judgment of other people, that I need to stop and I need to take a look at the actions I'm taking. I need to be the example. Yeah. Instead of blaming and judging others, That's so, true. love that quote. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. I'm sure you inspired women around the world with your message. So thank you for that. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for watching Self Made Successful Women. And if you do have any questions or comments, please leave them below or come onto my website at selwaybadin.com. Until then, see you next time. Like what you saw? Click here to receive my 10 commitments of the successful and empowered woman. Plus, find out how you can get a one on one business coaching session with yours truly. So, what are you waiting for? Subscribe today!